Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. You know what it is. It's not only Taco Tuesday. It was also Trading Tuesday. But you know, every Tuesday, it is Trolling Tuesday, where we go around the NFC East, and we check the pulse of all the teams in our division. Because in the end, it's all about what happens between all of us. We know how we feel. We ended up getting kind of a bonus win when we thought we had, or some people thought we had, no chance in hell to win without our quarterback. But our team came together. They rallied together. They not only beat the Minnesota Vikings, they beat the officials as well. And we're feeling pretty good with a three-and-a-half game lead in the NFC East. So let's go around and check and see how some of my brethren, i.e. my kids, are doing now some of my kids are making poor life decisions and and that, that's on me I, I need to be a better father and i need to stop dropping them on their head I, I think i dropped them on their head you know they always say one time too many maybe it was 50 times too many but let's go first to check out my son philly 500 see how he's feeling Welcome to the Victory Celebration Room, where we come out to celebrate every time the Eagles get a victory. And we this is only the third one we had all year, but I'll take it. I will take it, no question about it. And let me first start off by saying, Happy Halloween to all you dingbats out there. That's right, I'm disguised as Denzel Washington got a bad haircut. That's what I'm going as tonight. Uh, we're getting ready to go trick-or-treating in a little bit it's going to be fun before i start this cigar though i gotta move my cup my drink then we gotta light this bad boy up now for those that don't know we come out here every week because we can't we can't smoke inside if we do that the His wife, wife will double blue walk his ass. And I'll be sitting in a puddle of and my no own more, blood and urine. So no we more can't matrimonial do duties. So we come out here and we smoke a stogie, and that's what we're going to do today. My hair looks ridiculous, I know. I know. But it is what it is. God now, today, Philly, no. we are celebrating a victory. And I'm dedicating this cigar to one Jordan Howard and to one Balsam Scott. And to the Eagles coaches who finally, after weeks and weeks and weeks, did what the fans have been saying all along. Do you know how much further these coaches would be advanced if they just would listen to reality? Simple truths. <laughs> Run the ball. Simple truths. Blitz. Those are things that they finally did tonight. But without further ado, I've been waiting a long time for this. I want to start doing this before kids come trick-or-treating. I don't know a lot about a lot of people out here in the neighborhood, right? There's a new neighborhood for me. I don't want people coming up to me. I don't have the old HOA lady and all that. I'm talking too much. Let me just lay up. Keep in mind, they only beat the Lions. An 0 and 8 Lions. You would think that they beat, oh, I don't know, Tampa Bay? Smoking's bad for you, son. It's so good when it hits your lips, especially when you're on keto. I don't know what it is, but smoking a stogie on keto is way more relaxing to me than not. I don't inhale cigars, but it is what it is. Oh, man, it tastes good. There's a big fat-ass cigar in my mouth. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to be careful on this one. <laughs> Pause. Pause, son. I, I guess it's safe to say he's feeling good. Sorry, it's juicy. He spits. So, today was a big win. It wasn't just that. It Eagles was the Lions, win. Philly. They destroyed, I mean, destroyed the Detroit Lions. And we <laughs> needed it. It, it. was the first win all year. It was the first game all oh year. My God. I, I wasn't losing my mind. I wasn't pissed just, off at any one point oh, in time, which is really good because. Congratulations. I'm sick of waking up to Monday videos of Mark Holmes the posting videos of me having <laughs> meltdowns. I don't like it. What can you do? But oh. it was what it was. And today, the Eagles came out. They ran the ball. They put Jalen Hurts under center. They ran ball Scott. 
They ran my, uh, Jordan Howard. They ran even a little bit of Professor Kenneth Gainwell at the end. And it made a huge difference. This is what they should have been doing from the beginning of the season. If they ran the offense like this. So no more Nick Cotite as the head coach. Um, I want to say something about my son here. We played each other in fantasy football, and, and I fell short. Congratulations, Philly 500, on getting the win. You know, son, you, you beat your dad. But I want to put in there one thing. My whole premise when it comes to fantasy football is I want my players. I want cowboy players on my team. And even though my quarterback was Dak Prescott and he went out, I stuck by my principles there. I went to Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush, who everybody in fantasy football said, what are you doing? I said, I am a ride-or-die Dallas Cowboy fan. I know we're going to Minnesota. Minnesota's got a good defense. Cooper Rush has thrown three passes in his NFL career. But I believe in my Cowboys because I'm a diehard Cowboy fan. Do you know that this mother humper right here, this mother humper, and when I say, I mean, this mother humper was playing the Lions. And he had Jalen Hurts going against the Lions. And he benched him. He has no faith in his own team. He's not a ride or die fan. Just saying. So let's go to my other son. Cop pistol and see how he's doing. Hey, baby doll. Hey, say hi to grandpa. What's on? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every week. Whistle. Oh man! Oh man! I was so glad and sinker at night, man. I mean, yeah! <laughs> Whistle. Come on, son. It's not so bad. <laughs> oh, I could taste it. It was like a Kansas City. It was like barbecue in Kansas City, baby. Just having your heart ripped up. I mean, I could taste it. It was right there. I uh, just watering, man. I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> like, we just went on the road on Monday night against the Kansas City Chiefs and beat them. What's up? So close. So close. And it gets taken from us. Oh, son. What do you got to do to win a game? What do you got to do? What do you got to do? I don't even know how to be, I, I don't even want to be mad tonight. I mean, the Giants defense tonight. You don't want to be mad? Really sure. good. Wrestle! They played really good. They played good enough to win a ball game. Kansas City only scored played, three points last week. Honestly, I, I mean, forget last week for Just forget last week. I think this might have been the best game the Giants defense has played all year long. Pa Patrick Mahomes, yeah, he did his thing every now and then, but really, the only thing turn the ball about over? the Chiefs offense tonight was Tyreek Hill was Tyreek Hill, but their running game. But Mahomes really didn't beat us. He's in a slump. Whistle! And if you told me, if you told me that Patrick Mahomes wasn't going to be the ones that beat us. I said, well, we're going to win. Sorry, son. You know, I don't know what, I don't know what to think. I don't, I don't know. I want, to, I want to think that Joe Judge did a good job tonight. The jury's probably nope. out on if Joe Judge coached a good game tonight. Because, you know, the more the, the, I, I, I don't hate the timeouts when he took them. But then I'm thinking, on my, I'm thinking to myself, this Giants offense – Stinks. Hasn't been good enough, hasn't proven to be good enough to be able to win the game at the end of the game without their timeouts. That's like, 
That's like somebody trying to cook, baby doll, but they ain't got, they just an okay cook. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't have, they ain't got nothing to cook with. Like, we need all of the menu. We need our whole menu. We need all of our timeouts. I mean, obviously, we're banged up with players. Obviously, we ain't got some of our star players. Okay. But we need all of our timeouts. Whistle! Don't yell at baby doll. So, but both at the end of both halves tonight, tonight, the Giants offense has an opportunity with time, no timeouts, to drive down the field and put some yep. points on the board. And the late in the end of the game, we got a chance to extend this game, whether it be in overtime, overtime and win it. But we don't do it. Whistle. So I really got to put this game, and I got I got to say. Daniel Jones. <laughs> Whistle. Daniel Jones. I mean, he's teasing me, baby doll. Oh, Lordy. He's teasing me. Because. No, he just sucks. <laughs> you see, he, he, he did a lot of good tonight. That interception in early in the game was not good at all. <laughs> it wasn't. Whistle, whistle, please. I mean, I pulled out this thing tonight, baby doll. I haven't pulled this thing out since 1995. And I wanted Man. to have it because I thought it'd bring me some decent mojo to win a ball game. My son, yeah. FYI, is wearing the shirt. <laughs> he was calling for Joe Boo, but see, he forgot that you got to bring chicken but wings Daniel, and rum. Daniel just does enough to make me... Say yeah, Ew. but then he also does not. He doesn't do enough to make all the geeks out there circle jerk tomorrow on Twitter or on YouTube and say he ain't the guy. I mean, shove their. Ooh, okay, we're gonna leave it right, right there. Ooh, he was talking about cutting his nuts and stuff. What, what's wrong with you, son? What is wrong with you? All right, let's talk to. Or listen to my son to be Rio, who uh, watched Denver. In football nation, it's your boy Rio, and we are back with another episode for of Rambling About Washington for my Rambling with Rio YouTube channel. And as you can tell with the colors, the ticker, and the name of the episode, hmm. Washington it's has not going to be good yet again. Uh oh. 17 to 10 to a bad football team known Ooh. as the Denver Broncos and the most pedestrian arm talent quarterback in the history of football, Mr. Teddy Bridgewater. But who am I? But Teddy's a winner. To judge or pass any type of critique on Teddy Bridgewater when our quarterback situation is the way it is here. Ooh. It's bad right now, guys. It's really bad. There's not much How bad to is talk it? about. We could use a distraction or 10 right now. We lost to a bad football team, and once again, we had our chances. The ball moved up and down the field all day. Mm -hmm. The defense is finally hitting their stride. Mm -hmm. But. But. There's always buddy a but. Number four, buddy back there calling the shots. He's just not it, man. So we're going to start this episode of Rambling with Rio with. Let, let's all just raise a glass. Oh, raise, raise a, glass a glass and just pour one out. Pour one out for number four, Mr. Taylor Heineke, mm. Mr. Bud Light himself. Let's pour one out. Ooh, you this see, is gonna I'm get dressed ugly. like the Grim Reaper today because I'm here to ring in the death of the season for the Washington Football Team. We are two and six, and we're not coming. I'm, we're not coming back from that. There's no rally in us this year. There's no, we're going to go wow. on a run. Like, no, it's not It's not happening. Let's be realistic for a second. I'm not sure there's more than two wins left on the schedule. And that's being modest at this point. But let's wow. talk about the quarterback, Taylor Heineke. Oh, Lordy. A fun Lordy. story it was. The Disney underdog story. Disney underdog. The cast off. What? The journeyman. The ODU graduate who electrified us in the playoff performance he had last year. 
It was fool's gold, ladies and gentlemen. It was fool's gold. gold. When you're pushing 29 years old and there's no tape of you, anything good you'll do will be magnified in the hyperbole and hysteria and Mm -hmm. thirst for quarterback Mm. will push it up even more. And that's what happened. We went for it. We saw something and we said, you know what? There could be something there because we've never had it. So we're so damn thirsty to have it (laughs) that we force it on any tiny microscopic amount of adequacy because that's all it was. Wow. That's all it was. The thought that Taylor Heineke could be the long-term starter for this football team, it's not even a conversation I would entertain anymore. It's such a laughable fucking discussion. Whoa. Taylor Heineke is Colt McCoy without football awareness, IQ, with happy feet, and with a fucking Bud Light endorsement. That is who Taylor Heineke is. He will never, never be a long-term, short-term, any type of solution that has the word starting quarterback next to it. He will never be that in this league. Wow. He just isn't. I know the wow. story's great. I know the T-shirts are cool. The dives to the pylon. If he's stuck in between the tackles and forced to make a throw, he will not make the throw. He has easily a bottom three arm in the NFL. He does not feel pressure. And he processes defense and he processes and sees the field and gets through his progressions on the rate of a fucking sloth. That's just not going to do it. Say what you want about coaching. There were coaching blunders. And we're going to get to coaching in just a second. But the biggest reason why we are on a four-game losing streak is because the goddamn quarterback is not giving us a chance each week. He's not giving us a chance. The ball is walking up and down the field, and he can't do shit in the red zone. Because that's when the defense starts to collapse on him, and he has no fucking idea what to do. Lake Lewis, my guy, friend of the show, friend in real life, my brother, he said, he brought up a good point. He said, I don't know why Scott Turner calls so many offensive plays outside the hashes. So for all of you that would like to pile on Scott Turner, this week there is a critique. Yes, Lake brought it up. Why do you call so many passes outside the hashes? You want to know why Scott probably does that, though? Because he's an NFL offensive coordinator and an NFL quarterback is supposed to be able to make those throws. Buddy is incapable of making those goddamn throws. Week in and week out, and he makes cornerbacks look like the second coming of Deion Sanders every week because every pass he throws outside the hashes, it sits there in the air and just floats like we're watching the goddamn Matrix or something. It just sits there. Oh, there's no velocity. Oh, Rio. He doesn't see the field. He doesn't see open receivers and he can't make a play in the red zone. We put up 772 yards in our last two games and have scored 20 points, 20 versus a Joe Barry coach defense and versus the Broncos without half of their damn roster on injury report. And then I know we can say, oh, but a lot of our players are injured, too. Who the hell cares? Who cares? The players out there, they did enough to win this game today, but the quarterback, wow, his ineptness did not give us a chance to win the goddamn game. Even Taylor oh. knows his arm sucks. He hears about it so much that on the final play of the game, instead of giving the receivers a shot to catch a miracle Hail Mary that happens to everyone except for us, Oh, man. He throws the ball in the goddamn stand. So the one time we need his arm <laughs> to just float one in the end zone, oh, God. this fucker decides to throw the ball into the fourth row and bless some lucky fan with the NFL football from a bum. I, I'm sorry. Ooh, <clears throat> sorry about the F-bombs there. He's scaring me. He's, his anger is scaring me. So that's where we sit. The Dallas Cowboys are up here, and the rest of the NFC East is down here trying to get crumbs. 
and scraps. Who's the worst team in the NFC East? Is it the Giants? Or is it Washington? Eagle fans will tell you they're the best team in the NFC. Well, all I can say is this. Come on, Danny. Run it, Danny. Don't fumble it. Don't fumble it. I just sat there and said, don't fumble it. Rasheed, let's go. Rasheed, look, you know you're old at 